Greetings. Uh, today's uh, discussion will focus on a brief introduction to pressure ulcer staging. Before we uh, dwell into that, recently the National Pressure Ulcer Advisory Panel changed the terminology from pressure ulcer to pressure injury. The rationale for that will become clearer towards the end of our discussion. So now let's look at the rationale behind pressure ulcer staging. To do that, one has to understand the different layers of soft tissues covering the bony skeleton. So if you look here, this is a cross section of the skin and underlying tissues. Now remember skin is an organ composed of different tissues. The first layer of skin is the epidermis. The next layer is the dermis. Together, the epidermis and the dermis constitute the skin. Underneath the skin is the hypodermis, the subcutaneous or the fatty layer. Okay, different terminologies for fat. Underneath the fatty layer is the muscular layer covered with a thin layer of fascia. Underneath the muscle is the bony skeleton. So now let's recap the different layers. Epidermis, number two, dermis, number three, subcutaneous layer, number four, muscle, overlying the bony skeleton. Now, let's look at pressure ulcer staging. Stage one is non-blanchable erythema of the epidermis. So visually, when you look at the skin, at stage one pressure ulcer, you will see epidermis first layer. Stage two is disruption of the epidermis and exposure of the second layer, the dermis. Stage three is disruption of the epidermis and the dermis and exposure of the third layer, the subcutaneous layer. And you guessed it, stage four is disruption of all of the above, epidermis, dermis, subcutaneous layer and exposure of the muscular layer. Now, stage four can involve either exposure of the muscle or bone or both, depending on the anatomical location. So now you see the rationale behind pressure ulcer staging. If one proceeds from the surface of the skin to deeper tissues, the staging increases from one to four. Now we haven't talked about unstageable pressure ulcers or deep tissue injury. That's for another day. Now remember at the beginning of my uh, discussion here, I said the terminology pressure injury will become more clearer. Well, let's look at uh, pressure ulcer stage one. Pressure ulcer stage one involves non-blanchable erythema of the epidermis. There's no ulcer. So now you can see why the terminology has been changed from pressure ulcer to pressure injury. The other one involves deep tissue injury, which we'll discuss at a later date. So next, let's discuss the different types of tissue that one could see if one was looking into a pressure ulcer. Now remember, pressure ulcers are not clean-cut geometric shapes. They are not rectangular like this. If you see a pressure ulcer like this, then that's man-made. Pressure ulcers, for all intents and purposes, are carved by the forces of nature. You know, and just like in nature, shapes made by nature tend to be asymmetrical and irregular pressure ulcers are also asymmetrical and irregular in their contours and three-dimensional shape. So there's a potential not only to see the deepest tissue type involved, but all of the above layers. So let's look into that further. So for stage one, one would see only one tissue type which is non-blanchable erythema 
of the epidermis. Now remember when you're measuring pressure ulcers, you're measuring them with length and width, so it's a geometric shape, a rectangular shape most of the time. So within that well-defined geometric shape, you have an irregular ulcer. So for stage one, there's only one tissue type, the epidermis. For stage two, there's a potential to see not only the dermis, which will be visible, but also the epidermis. Stage three, tissue types will be subcutaneous layer, potentially dermis and epidermis. For stage four, that will be either muscle or bone or both and potentially all of the above layers which could be fat, dermis and the epidermis. So when describing constituents of the pressure ulcer, these are potentially the tissue types that could be seen in different stages. Now remember I have not discussed necrotic tissue or slough. We'll discuss that at a later date. When staging pressure ulcers, it's important to note that it's the tissue type exposed that decides the level of pressure ulcer, not the absolute depth. The thicknesses of skin vary. For example, over the eyelid is half a millimeter. Over the heel is five millimeters. And the thicknesses of subcutaneous tissue vary throughout the body. So over the coccyx, where there's very little subcutaneous tissue and generally no muscle, a four millimeter deep pressure ulcer could potentially be stage four. Whereas over the heel, it could be stage two. So be careful not to look at an ulcer which may appear shallow and to call it a lower stage. Look at the tissue type exposed. Now there are other things that you'll have to take into consideration, you know, unstageable pressure ulcers, which we'll discuss at a later date. You may be saying, well, hold on. How about ulcers with exposed cartilage, tendon, fascia? What stage are they? Ulcers with exposed ligaments. What stage are they? Well, if I tell you that all of these structures lie below the fatty layer, the subcutaneous layer, you will know that they are all stage four. So, it's easy to remember. If it's exposed subcutaneous layer only, then it's going to be stage three. Any other tissue other than the dermis, it will be stage four. Think about it. So that's all for this little brief introduction to pressure ulcer staging. See you next time.